Element presents Strike. My strife, my youth, my love, my hate, my respect and love. The dominators of the game, exclusive to the element. Turn down the light. On a massive metro. It is indeed massive metro. It's 19 minutes after three o'clock, and we are officially in the stripes hour. And I'm very happy to say the 88 King and the modern day MacGyver is in the building. What up, X? I'm well. What's good, lady? I'm good. We're Lovely having chats intro. off air. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you know, you gotta show that you pay attention to what's going on. Shout out. Shout out to you. So we have finally gotten thank the king. Yeah. We've been waiting. We're like, yo, where's X? Where's X? What is he doing? Yeah. Why isn't he giving us the music? And now we have the music. How does it feel to have let it go? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I think when you've been working on it for so long, um, literally, like, it's your entire life's work. It yeah. being my debut album. Um, the only thing I've ever dreamt about was just people hearing the music. So now that the music is out there, um, I guess now the challenge is just making sure that it reaches everyone. Yeah. yeah. Making sure that people get to hear it. It's actually a South African story for the world type right. of thing. So I'm not limiting it to just the borders of South Africa or Africa, but I want it to go as far as it possibly can. How does it feel though? I mean, music is a very personal thing and um, especially your debut album must feel like birth in a baby. I would assume. Yeah. I don't really know what that feels like <laughs> though, but I would assume that that's what it feels like. But yeah, how does it feel having yeah. yourself bare Out like there. that in front of everybody? Look, I think you get used to it. I mean, that's the art. Um, the main thing I try to focus on is just retelling my truth and putting it out there. Because um, my goal with the music is to inspire. Mm-hmm. So by telling my story, I know there's people who are going to listen to it, resonate uh, with obviously certain things that I've come into contact with. And for me, I, I look at it as my journey and it being a, a constant evolution so i mean i think that's what we all hear as humans for, yeah you know what i mean so if i can help someone else sort of work on their journey and maneuver then that's best i've listened to the album a number of times and the one thing that stands out for me is how very open and honest and vulnerable you don't you feel like are. it's a long album I don't feel like it's a long album. Yeah. Not if you're paying attention to the story. Not if you enjoy stories the mm-hmm. way that I do. Shut up. Um, so, and to hear the different nuances, to hear you going from being super ratchet yeah. to <laughs> feeling like you're in love to, oh my gosh, yeah. hip hop and I'm falling back in love with it. Yeah. And all the different emotions that you take us through, you know. Yeah. And for me, it's like that vulnerability and that level of vulnerability and that level of honesty is not something that's easy and it's not something that people are necessarily trying to do yeah why did you do it i think the era of like putting on the facade is behind us you know what i mean people Mm -hmm. want to engage with the actual person and give us a story as bare as it is because i mean we're moving towards a time where it's not about certain individuals Mm -hmm. it's about every single person like we all here for a specific reason we all have gifts within us so i mean the era of idolizing people is actually something that's coming to an end we realizing our strengths as a people and for me if i can make other people sort of have that sense of okay if he can go through something like this and still be able to put it out and in the next moment do something as amazing as you know what I mean? Then, I mean, it, it, it makes people believe that they can do the same. All right, you just spoke about something that I really find industri- interesting. You spoke about idolatry and the era of idolizing people. And yeah. that makes me want to ask you something. But right now, i got to go get that bag. Otherwise, I won't be here next week. And then we're going to come it. back and chat to Kid X. John, it's your boy Kid X and Fanara Auntie. You're listening to The Element with the pristine Queen Aziza. Trust yourself. Messy metal. <laughs> Exactly, I want to let their stock fell. I don't know, like, why? Cause now I cannot tell it. I'm just to, need it. We need to be it. pristine. It. So if it's if it's not tell it, tell it how your stock fell this December. Just look out for X. He's gonna be gunning for your money. Full on. Full on. We gotta right. go. We gotta sell a million copies. That's my aim. We gotta sell a million copies. Yes, ma'am. So what are you gonna do? Steal stock fell money and then go buy your album? If I gotta. <laughs> How are we looking on Let's that mission it though? It doesn't come to that. Um, I think we're looking pretty good. Um, it's a long-term plan, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I think we 
we've got a nice plan that we've put into place so mm -hmm. over the festive season we're just going to be in the streets yeah making sure that we're moving are you going to have those dope skippers so let's have a do people want those skippers Yes, I remember. I remember people were like, "Yo, ex, where can I get the t-shirt?" You're like, "Wherever." What, what I are am, they prepared to do? Come for, out to the for show. Those t -shirts? I could say we have to ask them. Yo, if you are prepared to do something, anything, and everything to get our merch from up. Kid X, hit me up on 0749407992. That is on WhatsApp. Send me a voice note, and uh, we'll play it, and we'll you can let us know what it is you're willing to do to get that merch from X. I don't know how far he wants you to go. How far you want him to go? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's no limit. We can go anywhere. There's no limit. We can go anywhere. Get creative. I think the most creative one will get it. I don't know what the it is, but you'll get it either way. So just <laughs> now we were chatting, and yeah. um, you were saying that the era of idolizing people is is coming to an end. Yeah. Why do you say that? And does that also mean that the the era of the celebrity <clears throat> is clo close to an end as well? Um. Yeah. I see it that way. I mean, for me, just um. I mean, through the journey of making my album and through searching for self and wanting to actually figure out what my journey on earth is, I realized that, yo, as much as I feel like I'm special, <laughs> right. I'm special type right. of thing. So, um, I mean, all of that is because now we live in the information age where you literally can access whatever you want to know. So in the past, I mean, we, it wasn't so easy to, to get the knowledge or the intel that I've since stumbled on that brought me to the realization of that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that that's why you had idolizing and the, the whole concept of celebrity in the past. But I think people are slowly educating themselves uncovering them uncovering the mysteries that were previously hidden so yeah i think we the more people evolve and become their higher selves like yeah they're gonna realize that actually whoever i was idolizing was actually no different for me i could literally be that person do you think that change will um result in a change in the kind of artists that are trying to break into the industry as well because for a while there was talks of you know people are just trying to get into the hip-hop game for the money the fame the trend and the fact that it's mm. now a cool thing now hip-hop yeah. has kind of become a buzzword yeah you know and become a trend so do you think that once people start reaching a higher level of consciousness and being aware of what it is they're here to do definitely. that'll kind of change what happens in the game as well definitely uh, I think a lot is gonna change I don't want to speak too much on it because then yeah. it's it's like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing too much but I think with a shift in consciousness we also just gonna be very aware of the music that we constantly consume you know yeah. what i mean because i mean the music that you play is the soundtrack to your reality at any given moment so mm -hmm. um, it reflects as well just your level of consciousness and i mean the higher you go the more you become aware and that's what consciousness is so yeah that's true so i i heard i was i was watching one of your interviews and there was a crazy thing that happened with thank the king before it came out it got lost in atl yeah and some what's that that's story what happened that was that was something that happened last year yeah um, so we were mixing the side a of it mm -hmm. um, and literally the guy we gave it to went on to have a baby mm -hmm. well his girlfriend had a baby i would hope and it's then, the girlfriend and not him <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he disappeared like we'd already paid the guy obviously. yeah but i mean post him going off to have the baby we never heard from him again so uh it got to a point where when some of the guys in the team flew to atl to go and put in some work when Costa was doing something with ti out mm -hmm. there uh they managed to link up with some of the guys from the 808 mob mm -hmm. and just to obviously fact check the entire story and they told like we learned that obviously the guy we paid and trusted with the whole project is no longer part of the team but they definitely knew the guy so i mean from there on it was just like a being sent from post to pillar so we literally had to start all over again in terms of just the wow. mixing and mastering process of it all so what's going through your mind as all of that is happening with your baby it's just lost <laughs> like yo i've lost my baby yeah well one half yeah. of my baby <laughs> yeah I, I was devastated but at the same time uh 
like I knew there was a reason for it because had it been ready, had it come back, had he mixed it and mastered it and sent it back, the album would have dropped last year. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have been like a double album as it is now. Mm-hmm. You would have only had side A. Um and who knows how that whole story would have played out for me. I feel like uh it happened for a good reason. I think that's what brought us here. It sort of made us also step back and look at just the occurrence of it and look at the entire picture and listen to the music, reevaluate the situation and maybe like set or move the goalposts and set an even further like target. So I think that's around the time when we started working on side B. All right. It's uh, 24 minutes before we hit 4 o'clock. We're going to give you Kid X with Mama featuring The Legacy. Shakunjan, it's your boy Kid X and Fanara Auntie. You're listening to The Element with the pristine Queen Aziza. Trust yourself. Messi Meto. Uh, the lyrics come from Wu Tang. Wu Tang in a song called Triumph, yo. Okay. Hey, song. song called what? Triumph. Hey, it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky. X, do you know who said it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never heard that bar until you dropped it right now. You've n- never? I feel yeah, I, my Wu Tang game is terrible, actually. Why? I, I started listening to hip hop in 2003, to be honest. Like, I started 8 Mile Ugyale. Okay. And then I, I backtracked a bit for, obviously, I had to go back in time for like a park. I went yes. back for like a few people, but I didn't do, I, I, I didn't go, I, I wasn't too expensive extensive in like mind you picking up everybody you yeah know what I mean? so yeah yeah okay so who are some of your biggest influences um locally mm-hmm. everybody everybody shout out the to everybody game. in south yeah. african hip-hop so shout out to the game right now uh internationally you've got um i listen to a lot of jay-z mm-hmm. i listen to a lot of little brother slash foreign exchange mm-hmm. i listen to a lot of Jada Kiss, I listen to your fab, I listen to J. Cole, uh, Drake. Yeah. Yo, talking about Drake, what do you think about the story that just came out that it was actually 40 that <laughs> put, like did that. him dirty I saw that. and put the story out there about Drake's kid? And when That's have crazy. you in your life been done like really, really, really dirty by like a really close friend? Mm. Mm. Damn. <laughs> About to break out into tears right now. No, it's okay. I, I got tissues. <laughs> Let's not even go there. Um, yeah, that's messed up though. Forty. Damn. Yeah. But I guess it's it, it's the pillow talking thing. Pillow talking is is always gonna gonna be the end of men. So, gents, let's. Let's lay off the pillow talk. Do what you gotta do. Get out of there. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. You don't do no pillow talk, X. <sighs> Milling is cool, and I'm to be honest with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you you out here like just loose with the lips out there because it's, it's kind of good. Uh huh. I think you said it all. Uh huh. That's uh-huh. actually a play on words. There's a lot going on in what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you for catching that one. It's 30 minutes before we hit four o'clock. Gonna come back with Auntie on the other side of this. That was the modern day MacGyver featuring Chiano Sky with I and D. And uh, I had Eddie in the background, like trying to hit them high notes. And I, I think, I, I think you, you're a very strong technical producer <laughs> and a very strong <laughs> engineer. And I love you. But maybe, maybe let's not do that again. You know, still kicking it with KidX at least for the next eight minutes. And uh, we're going to get into whose bar is it anyway just now. But before we get into that, on 323, three, right? Because I was listening. So what I like to do is when I know I'm going to be interviewing somebody, I make it a point to just listen to their music like for mm. a day or for the week or whatever. Because I feel like that's the best way to kind of get a little bit closer and get more in the yeah. zone. Even if you have heard the music before, right? Yeah. So I, I even made a note because I was like, yeah going in what could this be going in so you say you're back on that same ish you fell mm. in love with mm. you know and then you say hip hop so yeah. when did you find or feel yourself not being in love with it you know it's, yeah. it's one thing when stuff happens yeah. and you kind of take your knocks feel yeah. a little bit bruised or whatever but it's a different thing to feel like maybe you're not in love with it anymore yeah yeah <sighs> damn 
<laughs> so when you listen if you listen to the album um uh, you'll notice that there's like obviously themes about relationships love mm-hmm. and it's not solely themes pertaining to like relationships with people yeah a lot of it has to do with the art form or hip-hop itself so yeah. you, you'll notice that i fall in and out of love with hip-hop yes and for me a lot of it has to do with obviously if you si- spend time maybe working on something and you feel like okay it's of a certain quality mm-hmm. and you literally throw it out there and things don't sort of play out the way that you sort of envision them playing out i think that sort of affects you mentally in the sense that you you begin to doubt a few things yeah. so for me that took it strain just in terms of me wanting to go back in and sort of i guess work harder mm-hmm. do it even better you know what i mean like there's moments where uh you you can sort of pick that up on the album which is what i was telling you earlier that if you listen to side a side a is actually the beauty in the struggle or the struggle which is beautiful for me mm-hmm. and i felt like i needed to have side a for you to sort of understand how we got to side b because mm-hmm. a lot of the time i feel like sometimes people just give you the side b and yeah it's, it's proper filtered you don't really understand like yo what are the shortcomings what is this person really dealing with uh on a day to day what are their challenges so i wanted to put it all out there i wanted people to fully understand the struggle that came with everything and to the, also have an appreciation for then what would be side b when yeah. when things sort of sound a bit more cohesive and they starting to come together so you're back now you're you're back in love with with hip hop i'm assuming now a little bit we're more we're still on the rocks before. a bit we're still, still on, on the, the rocks. rocks yeah we're working through our things but i mean do you still love her i think deep down yeah definitely yeah yeah and you're doing things very very differently um even the way that you had uh cc come out you know yeah. there was that whole social media push yeah. then there was a chick who was holding it hostage yeah. and having a party <laughs> with her friends yeah. and you're like yo what's going on yeah, so fully. you're doing things a lot differently right now and what what is the the new end game if i can put it that way world domination yeah yeah how are we looking on that uh we've got an ETA of 2020 ETA of 2020 yeah okay yeah but we obviously trying to maybe bring it a bit closer we're looking at maybe maybe end of 2019 mm-hmm. that would be like a and what can we expect from you now in the next few months you know to shut down 2018 and how we're going to go into 2019 as well um right now um in the production stages of the next video that I'm going to drop off the album which is going to be black and I'm actually going to roll out two singles right okay. now before the year's over um uh, I feel like Umtano Munt is doing its thing now yes, since the video has come out people are sort of um I guess it's going to take on a life of its own and mm-hmm. I actually debuted that song right here yeah so yes. shout out That's, I remember um yeah and then obviously there's the album tour coming we we're going to hit december pretty hard with that there's going to be merchandise people obviously want ikipaza aunty please let me especially gay cop wait we'll let me out. know where to go we'll what i got to do we'll bring it you, I don't, can you say. don't gotta leave oh, you don't okay. gotta leave yeah <laughs> i'll sing right here then <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll sort that out there's going to be merchandise obviously around the album just oh, tdk related merch yeah. um There's going to be other things as well that we do that are non-music related but hmm. are around the music. So um yeah, I'm having like an art exhibition end of the month. What? Um uh, yeah, pretty much surrounding if you look at the album cover mm-hmm. um on Thank the King, there's a mm-hmm. lot of like art elements that are fused. Yes. So you've got a statue by Setlao Marajo Mashilo. Mhm. Uh you've got a Roro in Panara Austin. He's sitting in front there with uh Amakrayoni. Yes. Sort of reprogramming the statue, you know what I mean? Uh then you've got um obviously 
um, Mam Esther. Mam um, Esther Mahlangos uh, designs. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. backdrop. And she also designed the actual original CDs. So we're going to be showcasing some of those uh, original pieces at the end of the month. Where? Um, I'll send you an invite, actually. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a very... Yeah, but invite only, sorry folks. Sorry guys, but I'll I'll be there and I'll <laughs> let you know what happened and and you know, I'll maybe have X come back and you know, get some nice visuals on it as well and explain everything a little bit more as well. Fully. fully. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming through X. Thank you for Thank showing you for us love me. and uh, for just kicking it with us on this rainy Saturday. And so everybody should just follow X Kid X S A yes, on ma'am. all social media platforms to find that information except for that invite you know it's kind of <laughs> exclusive uh, we're going to wrap up whose bar is it anyway quickly because I also want to school X you know since his Wu-Tang ain't quite that strong put me on, put me on. so um, yeah that is whose bar is it anyway it is Wu-Tang but I wanted to know if you knew who jumped on first and it was Inspector Dick and he kicked it off with abomatomically Socrates philosophies and hypotheses can't define how I'll be dropping these mockeries lyrically perform Damn. armed robbery flee Ugh. with the lottery possibly they spotted me that's yeah. who far it is Damn, oh girl. yeah the element presents strife my strife my youth my love my hate my respect and earth. The dominators of the game exclusive to the element turn down the lights on a massive metro.